Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com and the topic of kinematics. The title is Distance versus Displacement. Often when you see verses you're looking at graphing. That's not the case here. We're looking at the difference between the two. And that difference comes down to the fact that one is a scalar and one is a vector. So, well, what is a scalar and what is a vector? Well, first of all, every variable, that means every description of something that could be represented by a number, like temperature, energy, force, distance, speed, time, those are all variables. Every one of those is either a scalar or a vector. A scalar is one that it does not account for direction. In other words, direction has nothing to do with it. Think of energy. The energy in a car, when it gets in an accident, it has to do with how much damage gets done to the car. If two cars are traveling head on and the fact they're going opposite directions mattered, well, then they might have zero energy and that head on collision would have no damage. And we know that never happens. Okay. Um, so scalars are things that do not account for direction. Distance is a scalar. Okay. Distance. We will not care about direction when we're measuring the distance. Next, vectors account for direction. For example, force. If I push one direction on something and then I push the opposite direction on it, well, those forces cancel out and the thing doesn't move. So force is a vector because direction matters. Well, it turns out displacement is a vector as well. Okay. Displacement. I can't spell it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So distance is a scalar. It's like what you measure on your Fitbit or your phone when it tracks your, the distance you go each day. It doesn't care what direction you're going. It's just calculating the total number of steps or how many miles you go. Displacement, on the other hand, is how far you are from where you end up. If you go one direction and then come back, you don't end up very far from where you started. You might even end up in the same place and have zero displacement, even though you have a distance. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and go through the examples. The examples in this concept field are fairly simple. We'll get to scalars and vectors in more detail later. So first of all, the apprentice level. Wilbur runs north for 15 meters, then runs south for 3 meters. Okay, well, what's our Fitbit going to say? What's our phone going to say? It's going to say we went 15 meters and then we went another 3 meters. Boy, I had those come in a funny order. Um, then he runs south. So he goes 15 meters and then he goes another 13 meters. So 15 plus 13 meters, meters equals 18 meters. Okay, that's the distance that Wilbur runs. But what's his displacement? How far does he end up from where he started? Well, he goes north 15 meters. By the way, we'll learn later, vectors can be represented with arrows, but conceptually you'll see the idea. Um, three meters south, so 15 meters north, three meters south, how far does he end up from where he started? Well, he started here, and he ended up here, and that would be 12 meters. Because the 3 meters was in the opposite direction, we subtracted it. So the displacement is 12 meters. Okay, the total distance, how tired did you get? Base that on 18 meters. How far did you end up from where you started? 12 meters. All right, a yo-yo goes down. 1.2 meters. Feel free to pause it and see if you can do this ahead of me. Um, goes down 1.2 meters, then goes back up 1.1 meters. What's the distance? How far did it go total? Well, we add those up. 1.2 plus 1.1 equals 2.3 meters. The displacement, on the other hand, remember, is how far does it go? Well, it goes down 1.2 meters goes back up 1.1 meters, not quite all the way. So what's left over? The displacement is 0.1 meters. 0.1 meters. That's how far it ended up from where it started. Or 
taking direction into account, we could say down is our positive direction, up is our negative direction. We end up with a positive number. That means for displacement, we want to include a direction. So 1.1 down. Okay, should have written up here 12 meters uh, north. Because okay. remember, direction is important for uh, vectors. Now, in the long run, writing which direction it is isn't the essential part. The essential part is that it has direction as an integral part of it. And in order to remember that, be sure you write down the direction for now. All right, the wizard and master level are very similar. Um, <laughs> and once again, had things come in a funny order. Um, but you see now we've got, in the master level, we've got three motions. In the wizard level, we've got four motions. Okay, so remember for distance, we just add them all up. 15 plus 3 plus 5 gives us 23 meters. Displacement, on the other hand, we have to pay attention to where it's going. Well, it goes 15 north, then it goes 3 south, 3 meters south, and then it goes 5 meters north. Well, it ends up 17 meters north of where it started. How did I get that? Well, We'll consider up our positive directions. We have positive 15, negative 3, positive 5. 15 plus 5 is 20, minus 3 is 17 meters north. Okay. All right, moving along. Distance, we just add them all up. 1.1 1 .1 plus 0.9 is 2. 3.2, 3.7 meters. The displacement, we have to pay attention to the direction. We'll consider down to be positive since our longer direction is down. Up is negative 1.1. Down 0.9, that's positive. And then up 0.5 meters. But that'll be negative because it's up. So 1.2 minus 1.1 is 0.1. Plus 9 is 1. Minus 0.5 is 0.5. It's in the positive direction, which was down. So meters down. All right. Good luck puzzling those out on, on the concept builder there. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below. And be sure and click that like and subscribe button if you liked the video and it helped you. Um, and we'll see you the next time on the Scientific Adventure.